Welcome to another Keel Hauled Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week, we got some information about pets as well as tall tales, crossplay not coming, and, of course, some stories from you. All that and more in this week's episode of Keel Hauled Podcast. <laughs> First up on today's docket, I went out and put out a poll on Twitter uh, regarding pets and microtransactions because I think that that's something that we did want to have a little bit of information on. So I put out there asking what people would be willing to pay for microtransactions for the pets because at the end of the dev update video, Joe uh, joked about the fact that the dev update video, he would be pushing out pets and that you would he would have enough time to save up for those. And that got me to thinking like, what is the actual cost of the, the pets going to be? Are they going to have a cost? Captain Falcor actually suggested that pets would be something that are given to everyone, but that there would be microtransactions for different types of pets as far as like their coloring and uh, skin. So I think that's an interesting idea as well. A lot of people didn't want to actually spend money on microtransactions. A lot of people were just content with the game itself and didn't necessarily want to spend money on those and thought that pets should be free. Uh, a lot of people are more than willing to spend more than $15 for pets. So the way the poll ended up, it was about 48 hours and I got about 668 votes. So thank you to the Twitter community members that helped share that around to pass it along, try and get as much information about it as possible. The way that the poll broke down was as I had four different options. I had a $3, a $5, a $10, and then a $15 uh, option for the different transactions. So the, 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 $3 option was 32%. The $5 option came in at 36%. And then the 10 and 15 both evened out to about 16%. So I would say that there is a, a vast majority of people that think that 3 to $5 uh, are the would probably be the best way to go about for the microtransactions for the pets. Myself, depending on how many pets there are and if there are different colors for them, and you have to buy each one independently, I would probably want to go with around the $5 range, though I would still be happy to pay around $10. I, I figure if I, can, if I can spend another $60 for year two of this game in microtransactions, then I'm probably going to be pretty content with the, the further kind of development cycle because we've been getting a lot. We've had a lot. And with this anniversary update, it shows that they are putting a lot of love and a lot of dedication into the actual, uh, into the game. And they want to make sure that the game is still interesting and unique uh, experience for everyone. And I think that's going to be I think that's going to be shown in just this update alone. This update alone could be the end of the updates for the whole year. I probably would, I'd probably be excited just for that, but I do kind of want to know what's going on. So it's interesting to see a lot of people are comfortable with that three to five dollar range. They, they're they're not willing to spend a whole lot more. But again, this is just a small. This is I was kind of hoping that I'd get a hundred votes on it, and then once I got to five hundred, I was like, okay, well, I'm kind of hoping to get a thousand votes on this to try and get a better idea of just how many people are interested in paying for microtransactions and also who are willing to spend a lot versus a little. What the worst thing I ever done? I mixed up all this fake puke at home, and then I went to this movie theater, hid the puke in my jacket, climbed up to the balcony, and then, then I made a noise like this. And then I dumped it over the side. Oh, and all the people in the audience, then, then, then this was horrible. All the people started getting sick and throwing up all over each other. I never felt so bad in my entire life. Next up on today's docket, let's talk a little bit about crossplay and the team right now because as you have probably heard from the dev update video if you didn't don't worry i'll cover it as well too they aren't bringing cosplay with the anniversary update i know they said they wanted to have that out before arena apparently the technical uh, uh, requirements for that are a lot higher than they anticipated and as a result they're gonna have to push that out so joe goes into detail in the dev update video letting you know that the 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 crossplay features are coming 
coming. They're going to be pushed out to insiders during the late May area, right around when we got the Hungry and Deep last year. And if all goes well, those will get pushed out in June, which is interesting because I'm still trying to rack my brain right now. Like, what is coming in June? I've been listening to a lot of other podcasts, and a lot of them have been getting hyped up for E3. Uh, Even the ones where it's like Sony, they know they're not coming out with any kind of announcements during E3. And I'm just kind of wondering, like, what is Sea of Thieves doing for E3? Like the Joe mentions that they're going to be out at TwitchCon EU uh, in April around the, the weekend of the 13th. So if you're interested and you happen to be in Europe, uh, EU Berlin has the TwitchCon. You, you probably already have tickets. You're probably not even like concerned about it, but they will be out there. So don't worry about uh, if they are or aren't, they'll definitely be out there. You can hang out with them. And to kind of go back, I'm still kind of wondering what what is going to be coming out in E3? What is, what are they going to announce that I I mean it feels like everyone's been working or I mean I guess it doesn't feel like it but they've said everyone is literally working on the anniversary update to make sure that they can get that finished and out and polished right for when it drops on April 30th. And I couldn't be more excited. We have uh, the, the the streams that are coming. So April 10th, uh, Joe said that they're going to be streaming for a couple hours to talk more in depth or to showcase the arena. On April 16th, they're going to be going into depth about the Hunter's Call, which the Hunter's Call is uh, Merrick. He has his reputation and you can actually hit pirate legend use by, by fishing and hunting. <laughs> it's kind of kind of a weird concept in my mind now. Like we we have two very large factions coming into the game. One is solely PvP. Uh, well, not solely. I, I take that back. It's not a hundred percent PvP, but it's PvP to the extent where you're going to be fighting pirates for treasure, and that's something that I know a lot of people are are prone to playing this game for. They want to have that experience, and I don't blame them. It's a lot of fun uh, to to get into ship battles and whatnot. So with the arena coming out or being talked about on the 10th, we're going to be getting the Hunter's Call on the 16th. And that's going to be all the the PVE kind of fishing and hunting. You know, if you don't want to kill people in the arena, you can kill people or you can kill animals. And, you know, they're, they're going to be talking a lot more about that Um in on April 16th on April 23rd they're going to be talking about tall tales and this is the this is probably the part that excites me the most because it's the part that actually brings in a lot of the story and with recently finding the morning star with recently finding uh the magpie's wing you, you guys remember that that uncharted island that you tend to hit near chartu key that that uncharted area i think it's like n13 it, it was one where where they had the actual merrick's logs uh they and have, have since had um beard Giddens soloing the meg naked with a chicken on board in a sloop story uh, journal that that area there has that wreck that wreck is now named and it's called the magpie's wing and that was ramsey the pirate lord's ship and it's it's cool that it's there uh the ship was intended to be a sloop from what i remember reading and i'm just kind of wondering like you know what do these have to do with tall tales coming up like it feels like we're getting closer and closer to finding out, and I couldn't be more excited. I've actually been going back and watching Indiana Jones and Goonies and just building myself up to this this idea of, like, oh, man, I'm still really hoping that we get, like, a Goonies experience with the the, the booby traps is really what kind of did it for me. The, the big log swinging down with the spikes in the trap door and the door slamming shut and freaking the pirates out. I Oh, man, I want that experience so badly. So I'm looking forward to the 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 23rd when april comes around and they actually talk more about the tall tales and what that all entails because it's going to bring a whole new dynamic to sea of thieves and just how just just how we actually play this game it's it's crazy i wonder if these are going to be something that's like repeatable or if this is going to be something where it's actually you do it once and it was good you get your commendations and that's it because i i would hate for it to be something where you can only you only get to actually enjoy it the one time everything that they've built since say like the curse sales i would say uh or actually i guess like 
Yeah, I would say curse sales, the ones where it's where it's kind of repeatable. The hunting or the hungering deep was kind of like once you did it, you were done and you didn't have to worry about it. Curse sales was really the one time where you could go out and repeat the the curse sales events and the devil's roar wasn't anything kind of like that at all, but it did have that that narrative where you went out and you searched out for the different crew members and once you found the crew members, you you learned of their fate and it, that's actually kind of a shame now that I think about it. Now that I now that I talk about that and actually get it out of my head, it's kind of a bummer for people that have just started playing the game. They never got to experience who Stitcher Jim is. Like you can watch the trailer of uh, the Devil's Roar and hear the song, but you never you never got to go out there and wonder like what is that creepy little bugger doing and you know like what's going on with him so unless you read the book which if you haven't read the book i highly recommend reading athena's fortune i actually bought a second copy for my okay so in a little history of that the reason why it's my second copy and not my fifth copy is because i did the contest back in october and gave out two copies uh to to people that were were listeners of the the actual podcast and one of those copies uh one of my copies actually got accidentally sent to my old apartment down in socal and uh yeah so someone at that apartment complex got a box and hopefully they read it and got invested in sea of thieves and you know looked up my last name and found the podcast and hopefully that was that that worked out for them i doubt it but uh maybe they donated it to a library who knows i'll have to i'll have to go down there one year and check it out see if the library has a copy of athena's fortune that that was just randomly donated but uh so yeah and then i i so i ordered another copy for myself because i want to be able to read it of course and after reading it i realized that every time they come out with a new shipwreck in the game that has references to athena's fortune i find myself like grabbing my physical copy thumbing through it and trying to find like the exact chapter that talked about the engagement that happened at golden sands outpost where it was like the big fight against the kraken and the different crews and stuff and it's awesome but i i just i I had a hard time actually like trying to every time thumbing through it i really need to put notes in there but instead i went and i smartly uh went on to um the apple store for books i don't even know what they call it anymore it's just books now i don't know they've messed up their whole ecosystem and i'm not going to get into it but the point was is that i managed to pick up a digital copy of athena's fortune and thankfully there's a search function in there and you can actually search for text and it'll pull up like the different chapters that are available and where they are and you can dive right into that area and uh, start reading like the specifics on what is going on and I think that a lot of people should really take advantage I, I picked it up for like eight or nine dollars US and it's it's been amazing to just be able to like any time I have like a thought in my head I'm just like oh I wonder what what did they what did he say about those chains I gotta look that up I just search chains and it pulls up chains in the book anywhere in the book and I can just start flipping through different like indexes and grabbing it it's been really nice so I've been enjoying that and uh, I would definitely recommend if you haven't read that book definitely read it because I think the tall tales are going to heavily pull from the ending of that book it's a it's a good read I want to say it's around 300 pages so if you're a fast reader you could probably burn through that in a weekend if you're a slow reader through me it's going to take you a month and thankfully you've got a month so get on it um, which reminds me, I need to do the second half of the spoiler cast for that. Um, but now is a good time because I can just flip to every other chapter to uh, read Lorena's. Uh, uh, Lorena's. I have no clue how to spell her or say her name, but um, uh, read her chapters, and then I'll hopefully get a, an update out with that. I've got a couple ideas for things coming in the podcast later on. But uh, I want to save those for later on when I can actually kind of like work with someone else. So speaking of someone else, I know I'm kind of diving from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing here. But I did want to thank everyone that uh, reached out to uh, CJ and myself for last episode. I know it was two hours. No one seemed to be upset about that. You guys are crazy. Uh, And I love you for that. But I did get a chance to talk with him a little bit and he was grateful for it. And it was just, it was cool. I really enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm hoping that we get a chance to do that again because it was, it was nice to get to talk with someone again 
talking uh, in depth about Sea of Thieves during like big announcements and stuff. So I think we're going to be trying to do something similar to that with a couple other community members uh, throughout there. And hopefully if it gets approved, um, hopefully someone from Rare. I don't know if that'll work out because obviously I I have to, you know, we have to go through PR and PR has to talk to lawyers and lawyers have to go back to PR and then they have to have meetings about it and then come back and tell the person yay or nay. So if we're lucky, hopefully I'll get someone from Rare to appear on the podcast. I'm really hoping because I, I think they're interesting. I know you guys love them and I think it would be great to actually uh, to have their story kind of told in you know, like off of an official, off from an actual like official Sea of Thieves capacity. I don't know. I just want to get to know them. They're they're such great people over there, and to have the opportunity to actually get to talk with them candidly about their life and their history with games is just a lot of fun. I I got a, I got to do a little bit of that with James uh, Thomas Big Sheep uh, when when I was doing the uh, the stream with them back in October about like the tattoos and then. Yeah, that was really fun. So, um, yeah, those are the the release dates. Again, April 10th, the stream for Arena. April 16th, the stream for Hunter's Call. And April 23rd, the stream for Tall Tales, which is going to be right a week before the actual release. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to find out, like, all the details that they're going to be telling us about. And then a week later, get to, to actually, like, play it and give you my firsthand experiences on, like, what it is, what you should keep an eye out for. Like, all this, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be grinding it a lot, so I'm probably going to be uh trying to take notes and give hints and helpful you know ideas on what you need to do for each one uh but man that's exciting i'm looking forward to it all right pirates so i asked and you answered so this week we've got some questions from mud bucket x-ray lex and of course Kylia. So they reached out to me with any last words over on Twitter. You can do the same if you want a question answered or brought up to discuss on the podcast. Just hit up hashtag any last words. This week, Mudbucket writes in to ask, I'm excited for more story-driven content. Do you think the storyline and lore from the that type of content adds to adventure when just sailing around? I feel it feeds my imagination. And what he's talking about is with Tall Tales. As Is this going to be something that is going to interact with us on a day-to-day basis when we're out sailing and I'd like to think so I'd like to think that things like the constellations that we saw or uh, just some of the different traps that we could encounter will play a part in the regular voyages that we uncover I would be kind of bummed to do all of this new content only to have it just be geared for that content I think that's why they went in and really kind of revamped the voyage system to add a lot more to it, whatever it ends up being. Uh, X-Ray Lux writes in, how do you think traps will work? Will they be a new mechanic to avoid slash disable or just a simple press X to disarm? I really don't know. It's hard to know how this is going to work out. I think the traps will be something that will kind of, you know, you'll know that you're getting close to one and you might see something that you have to either hit or shoot uh, to be able to disarm them. It's it's tough to say, you know, because this is going to be a whole new a whole new ball game for Sea of Thieves. We haven't really had any of this in the world so far. So I'm looking forward to seeing like how it plays out and uh, how you have to deal with these different types of traps. And lastly, Kylia writes in and says, do you think we will get anything above the base fishing pole? And if so, what type? Will it have plus bonuses to certain fish or to fishing in general like WoW has? Or just skins for the pole like ships? Or to make it look different but no stats or both? And I think they're going to stick with having items just uh, not have any kind of bonuses or sets. They seem very, very set on making sure that everyone has an equal playing field with all of their items. Uh, I can imagine a world where like if you're fishing, there's usually bait for, for fishing and having different types of bait might make a difference in that instance. I, I don't I don't know. I don't think they would have it kind of depends on what Merrick has for us like if he has voyages for us to set down to actually like go go do a, a voyage to go fish up a certain type of see that's the whole thing with the Merrick thing I just I don't know what's going on with Merrick and I, I get that you have reputation with him and that he's a way to get to pirate legend and that you have to turn in fish or I don't know what you have to turn into him meat I guess 
I don't know. I, they said monster, so obviously you're going to have to get something from the Megalodon and the Kraken to be able to turn into him. But is he going to have voyages that are just for that kind of a thing? Because if so, that's all that's all done by random RNG at this point. You know, you know, Krakens are going to hit when there isn't a skull cloud up, but we don't know how to summon a Megalodon anymore uh, unless somehow he gives us another song that allows us to summon a megalodon so that we can hunt it down and then bring back you know part of its carcass to to turn in for reputation i i don't know that's it's it's an interesting question though i'm kind of curious uh do you think that will i mean i imagine we'll mostly get skins for the different fishing poles but what those are uh or what what we get is is going to be hard to say in the trailer we did get some some look uh, we did get a look at the like a new kind of ancient civilization type of spyglass that the pirate and the crab were using to check out the constellation so i can imagine with uh with with that plus all the cosmetics that are coming in for ships uh with the sea dogs and with um you know them them kind of adding more set pieces for the cannons capstans and wheels uh we knew that they were messing around with having the different sets for uh the the cannons when, or the the wheel when they messed up and had the wrong royal sovereign one for that one versus just the regular sovereign so i i don't see them having bonuses uh if anything they'd probably do like a baiting system like you have to throw out chum to uh to kind of get a megalodon to spawn that would be really cool if you could chum the waters and uh, or you could fish up fish and then cut them up and then chum the waters with them for a megalodon you know kind of like you have to you have to get one thing to get another thing kind of thing uh, that would make sense to me I, I would probably bet on something like that anyway that's going to do it for any last words thank you for those of you that send out your questions i love getting them and i'd love to get better uh better interact interaction from the community too so if anyone hears this and is interested definitely hit me up uh it doesn't matter where you post it uh, i always look up the keyword any last words so just hashtag any last words on twitter i will find it and I will definitely answer it on the podcast. Just to let everyone know, if you haven't been on Twitter, then this may have come as a surprise to you. There was a comment from Joe, and basically what he said was, thoughts for the weekend. You may not always like decisions game devs teams make, but trying to understand why they make them and giving constructive feedback leads to far better relationships between players and devs. Everyone is human, how you say things matters applies everywhere and this was a you know coming from a team that is right on the cusp of releasing a huge trailer uh, or not trailer but a huge update is is kind of out of nowhere you know you kind of you kind of look at this and you kind of scratch your head like what is he talking about why is he being so cryptic nothing in the game so far seems like that makes sense well i i'm basically going to let you know that this pertains to insider and I can't talk about it for obvious reasons because of the NDA, but something happened and there's a lot of upset people right now. And I just want to remind you, if you're in the in the insider, one, don't talk about it. Two, don't talk about it. Three, if you're going to talk about it, take keep it on the forums. Don't bring it onto Twitter or other outside sources, because now I've got a lot of my friends on Twitter who are, you know, aren't paying attention to things as closely as as others are. And, they, you know, they shouldn't have to. They shouldn't be having to, like, dig into forums every single day and wonder what the heck is going on. Why is Joe sending out this cryptic message on March 30th? And all these people, you know, following, liking and saying like, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Look, I'm just going to say there are things that are proposed and you can be good and pro productive and, and constructive with your criticism, but don't hop online. If you're in the insider program and start flaming the, the rare team, because you don't agree with one of the choices that they've made or one of the decisions that they've, they've like, it wasn't that long ago that everyone was upset because loot didn't last, or maybe it was just me. Maybe it was just me. Uh, it wasn't just me, but you get the point. That flute, that uh, flute, that floating loot, uh, didn't last in the water that long. It 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 was there for a few minutes, and then it would just start sinking. And we talked to Rare. We let them know that we didn't think that it was long enough. And the next week, or not the next week, I guess the next update, it was fixed. Like 
seriously, folks. I understand like something happens and you may not agree with it, but let's be civil and try it out for a little bit. Let's give it some legs and see how how it works. Maybe you like it. You know, look at the barrel system again. It always seems to go back to the barrel system. I don't know why I have a hang up with the barrel system. Anyway, it, it was weird at first. We love it now. We wouldn't change it. And it's it, well, actually, I would change it if I could change the barrel system rare if you're listening. I would I would just ask that there be a giant red X on a barrel if there aren't any supplies in it. Please. I I'm still getting to the point where <laughs> where I still run up. I see it says empty. I still open it. I I don't know anyone that doesn't open empty barrels and be like, "Oh, huh. I guess there might have been something in there." Oh, well. It's it, there's not. So, I I, I can't say obviously what it is. It's something that is really changing or really different about the game. And I think it it's it needs to be tested. And the best way to do that is through the Insider program. Uh, so I'm sorry if that's cryptic. The only thing I can suggest is if you're really interested, just become an insider, agree to the NDA, read the information that's going on about it, and then you'll understand. You'll actually have an idea like, okay, this is what he's talking about. Got it. I don't need to I don't need to explain any further. Uh, and then you could actually add some, you know, well thought out criticism or uh, constructive feedback. If, if you'd like it, if you don't like it, if you think it's good or if you think it needs to be adjusted, they can adjust this stuff so quickly. Like, it's not going to be the end of the world, folks. Don't worry about it. And if you're not in the Insider program and you have no clue what I'm talking about and you don't care, I'm sorry I just wasted this time for you. But uh, I just wanted to address it because it's something that I think a lot of people are going to be wanting to talk about and aren't able to. And that's fine. Um, it's it's you, you just got to keep it to, you know, whispers in the shadows of night as two ships pass in the night i don't know metaphors i'm stopping all right pirates so we had uh all the news that i think i could find this week there's really not a whole lot there is going to be one uh infographic that i found online uh that sea of thieves put out and it's just the stats that they've had for the last year there's been some amazing stuff i'm going to put a link to the article that they put up in the show notes so make sure you read the show notes this week if you if you haven't already or if you don't usually uh because this link is going to be worth it and uh there's going to be some good information in there the the first year that they've had in one year the players for sea thieves have sailed 1.8 billion kilometers and that is apparently the distance from the earth to saturn which that's amazing that we've that we put that much uh, that much sailing time in. Uh, we've watched six thousand five hundred years of Sea of Thieves streams, which that's insane. So there's a lot more information. There's over six hundred and forty two billion gold earned uh, earned by turning in, not earned by stealing. And it's just it's crazy. This is such a great great game i love it i can't wait for it so i'm gonna kill it because that's the end of the news let's go into first mate's logs and of course captain's logs all right so i have a couple first mate's logs that i got in through email which is one of the good ways that you can send in your story there are plenty going around on the discord server nowadays so if you are short of stories and want to read them feel free to join the discord because there are some great stories there as well as pictures and some videos as well of some of the uh, wondrous takedowns and fights and treasure to behold so this one comes from the debater ahoy captain logan I was sailing solo and had a promising start to the night, with finding a sunken ship with more loot than usual. After loading up the loot, I noticed a skull fort pop up near Sailor's Knot Fort, and I quickly made my way there. I made relatively quick work of the skeletons at the fort, but apparently not quick enough. Once the skeleton captain appeared, I noticed a brig closing fast. I killed the captain, loaded the key onto my sloop, and decided to run, with the brig close behind in pursuit. Using my speaking trumpet, I asked for microphones, but there was no answer, and then, using the wheel, asked for an alliance while throwing up the flag, but it was to no avail. Making a rookie mistake, I bumped on an uncharted rock, slowing me just enough for the brig to kill me and sink my sloop. Once I respawned, I made my way back to the fort, just in time to see the brig starting to sail away with the treasure I worked so hard for. 
During the chase, I noticed from the way the brig was sailing, I was dealing with a fairly green crew. I quickly outsailed them and got within cannon range, and as I fired my first cannonball, a skeleton galleon appeared between us. I decided to use this to my advantage and fired upon the skeleton ship and immediately raised sail, putting distance between the skeleton ship and myself. It worked perfectly. With the skeleton ship soon diverting its full attention to the brig, and after a few minutes the skeleton galleon had done my dirty work by sinking the brig and returning to the depths from which it had come overconfident, I sped to the scene of the sinking ship just in time to see the loot pop up to the surface. I got close, too close, and ran smack dab into the mega barrel. It killed me, sank my ship, and ensured that all of the loot from the fort sank to the bottom of the ocean. A bittersweet tale that I shall not soon forget. This is a tale of Captain Angry Car Salesman and his crew. Captain's Log, 32419. Captain Angry and his crew, Ash and Wolf, were summoned by Duke the Dark Lord at the tavern in Gold Sands. Duke had another mercenary contract for them. This time, it was for the Shows of Plenty. The men were familiar with this area and sent off to complete this voyage. After hitting Mermaid's Hideaway, Cannon Cove, Lone Cove, and Sailor's Bounty, they had completed their voyage. To Duke, they had thought. However, a skeleton fort was up at Keel Hall Fort. His crew decided to get a few extra wages, completed the fort, and by now noticed other ships starting to show in the area. We loaded the treasure as fast as we could and set sail for Galleon's grave. A bit later, the crew was coming up to Shipwreck Bay to originally pass by. We noticed the Reaper's Mark in the air. We sailed closer. A Galleon. Captain Angry gave the helm to his first mate, Wolf, and directed Wolf to sail the brig between the rocks and carry on to Galleons. If I die here, take care of my ship, Wolf. Ash, follow me, he said. With an eye eye, Captain Angry and his crewmate, Ash, grabbed two gunpowder barrels and dove from the crow's nest into the water and started swimming up to the galleon. They debated on bombing from the bottom but decided to sneak on board. Both barrels lit and dropped below deck, they ran to the captain's cabin. To their surprise, no treasure, no pirates, not even a deckhand. They hopped off to scout on the island as the galleon was blown to bits and sank into the ocean. Ash, look out, the captain said as he pulled his flintlock out and popped a shot into a pirate running at them. Surprisingly, he fell to his death from the shot. Ash, we need to crawl up onto that beached shipwreck for a better viewpoint. If trouble hits, we can take the rowboat out. Ash climbed to the top of the ship, and Captain Angry walked inside to find a trove of captain's chests piled up in the corner. Ash, he called out, we have treasure, my boy. Help me load it into the rowboat, and we can leave. After moving two chests to the rowboat, another pirate shows up. This time, a legend, dressed in his ghostly black pants. With his flint lock at the ready, a shot was fired, striking Captain Angry in his arm. The captain fired, but missed. He thought, this pirate is better than me, that is for sure, and called out for his crewmate. Ash came running over, firing his flint lock. Another miss. However, the odds had swayed in Captain Angry's favor, as it was now a two-on-one situation, the pirate legend decided to run. After quickly scouting the area, there showed no signs of the legend. Captain Angry thought to himself, a legend or a ghost? The blood and the wound at his arm said it was not a ghost, and they continued to load the remaining treasure onto the rowboat with Ash pulling security detail. With one chest left, a single round is fired. Captain, he shot me! Ash called out in pain. Go, Captain! Go! Captain Angry hopped into the rowboat and started to paddle as fast as he could towards Crook's Hollow. First Mate Wolf had anchored the ship there. For what reason, the captain knew not. He just continued to paddle to get there before the first mate decided it was time to leave. In the distance, 
Captain Angry could see the legend had executed Ash before his eyes. Giving chase, the legend jumped into the water and with a powerful sword lunge ended up striking the rowboat but couldn't get a finger hold on the edge of the vessel. The captain rowed harder, faster, his arms growing numb. He turned to look and saw his boat getting closer. First mate Wolf, I need your help, my boy. Wolf had just boarded and heard Captain's call for help. He jumped down and climbed into the rowboat. They loaded their treasure as fast as they could. When the last chest hit, they raised anchor. A figure in the distance was cresting the waves. They are paddling in the water. They could see it, though there was no way they could be sure, but they knew it had to be the legend. How has a shark not eaten that varmint by now? The captain shouted as he dropped sails. Holding his flintlock high in the sea breeze, he was ready to fight for treasure, what was not rightfully theirs. Again, the legend had missed his chance to board. Captain Angry and his first mate sailed away to Galleon's grave. Captain, Wolf said, where's Ash? My boy, said the captain, he sacrificed his life for us. It was on that day Captain Angry and his first mate realized that sometimes... There was a bit of honor among thieves. They turned in their treasure and made a bit of coin. Ashes cut of the booty was buried in the sands out at Galleon's grave outpost. If he ever did make it there, the captain left his mark. He will know where to find the treasure and where to find his captain. If you ever do shout outs, I'm a very small streamer on Facebook. I can be found at fb.gg slash angry car salesman. Love your podcast. Love this game. See you out on the seas. Thank you very much for your story. I appreciate it. I hope you don't mind some of the edits I put in. Uh, hopefully the story still holds its uh, its its value to you. <coughs> All right, pirates. It's time for Captain's Log. This is a Disneyland original little long playing record, and I am your story reader. I am going to begin now to read the story of Treasure Island. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when Tinkerbell rings her little bells like this. Let's begin now. Jim Hawkins' great adventure began one day at the Admiral Benbow Inn in England. A man named Billy Bones, who did not have long to live, had given Jim a treasure map. Jim showed it to his good friends, Dr. Livesey and Squire Trelawney. The treasure was buried on an island. Jim and his friends decided to search for it. In the seaport town of Bristol, the squire hired Captain Smollett. The captain would undertake the sea voyage in his ship, the Hispaniola. The squire also hired a cook named Long John Silver. Long John, who had spent many years at sea, brought some of his friends to join the crew. Nobody knew it, but Long John and his friends were pirates. They wanted the treasure themselves. The ship set sail from Bristol Harbour. For many days, things went smoothly. One day, Jim was hungry. He climbed into a barrel to get himself an apple. Hidden from sight, he heard Long John and the pirates plotting to take over the ship. Jim told the squire, the doctor and Captain Smollett what he had heard. They asked him to keep an eye on Long John, who had taken a liking to Jim, and to warn them when the pirates were going to strike. Shortly afterward, the island was sighted. Long John, Jim and some of the pirates got into a boat to tow the ship into the bay. The pirates left on board decided to mutiny. While Captain Smollett was getting things under control, Long John made Jim his prisoner. He told the captain he would hold Jim until he got the map. While the pirates were beaching the boat, Jim escaped. He ran into the island forest, where they could not find him. In the woods, Jim met Ben Gunn, an old man the pirates had left on the island years ago. Ben was glad to have someone to talk to. He told Jim all about his rowboat, his cave, and the food he ate to survive. Captain Smollett noticed a stockade on the island 
and decided it would be a good defense against the pirates. He left two men to guard the pirates on the ship and set out for the fort. Jim joined his friends there. On the ship, the pirates overpowered the guards and took over. Long John returned. He and the pirates made plans to attack the stockade. Long John wanted to bargain with Captain Smollett to get the map. The captain refused, so Long John and the pirates attacked. The action was fast and furious. Jim was busy loading the muskets, but finally the pirates retreated. The people at the stockade feared the ship's cannon might be used against them. If someone cut the ship's mooring lines, thought Jim, the ship would run aground. Her cannon would be useless. When it was dark, he took Ben's boat and rowed out to the ship. He cut the lines, but the rowboat floated away. He had to climb aboard. The pirate on guard saw him and chased him up into the rigging. He threw a knife and hit Jim in the arm. Jim was badly hurt, but managed to shoot the pirate and climb down to the deck. The ship ran aground. Jim staggered back to the fort, only to be captured by the pirates. Long John was concerned over Jim's injuries. Under a flag of truce, he went to get the doctor. While Dr. Livesey bandaged Jim's arm, Long John told them he had the map. He wanted to bargain, though. He would protect Jim from the pirates if the doctor would help him when they were back in England. The doctor agreed. The pirates found the spot where the treasure was supposed to be. They dug a deep hole, but the treasure was gone. They thought Long John had stolen it. The pirates attacked Long John. Dr. Livesey, Squire Trelawney and their friends got into the fight too. Soon Long John was the only pirate left. It turned out that the treasure was in Ben Gunn's cave. Without telling anyone, he had dug it up himself and hidden it. Captain Smollett told the squire and Jim to take Long John back to the ship as a prisoner. He would be going back to England, perhaps to die. But Long John had saved Jim's life. He had to help him. At the beach, he saw his chance. He pushed the rowboat into the water so that Long John could row toward the open sea alone. Goodbye, matey. Good luck to ye, said the old pirate in farewell. I'll see you on the Sea of Thieves.